Yes, unfortunately, the title of this video is true. I lost over $11,000 in one single poker session. It was brutal, it was nasty, it was the biggest loss I've ever had in my entire life. Everything just went completely and utterly wrong to lose almost $12,000 in a single poker session. But to make things even crazier, two days after this huge loss, I went back to the poker room and I almost won back every single dollar that I lost two days before that. Well, in this video, I'm gonna recap those crazy two sessions I had, my biggest loss and one of my biggest wins down here in Florida. Hope you guys enjoy this one. Let's get to the hands. It's around 8 p.m. in Hollywood, Florida. I'm here at the Seminole Hard Rock. I buy in for $2,500 at the 510 game. Little did I know I was gonna end up losing almost $12,000 in just about four hours. Let's get into this first hand. There's a limp for $25 from an early position player, a raise from the button to $75, a big blind call for $75, and now I'm in the straddle with King Four suited. It's only $50 more to me, a suited king, a little bit of a light call, but I decided to put in the chips and the limper makes the call as well so we go four ways to jack five three two spades i flop the king high flush draw instead of checking to the initial raiser i decide to lead out on this flop for a 100 dollars bet somewhat of a sketchy odd play a little unorthodox but i like to try to mix in some of these plays sometimes the limper makes a fold and now the button the initial raiser looks over at the 100 dollars bet looks up at me and kind of makes an odd face and then raises to three hundred dollars big blind folds the action's now back over on me and now i feel like this is somewhat of a leveling war he knows that i'm probably not going to have too strong of a hand when i lead out here so maybe he could be raising with a variety of hands backdoor straight draws over cards maybe jack x holdings possibly over pairs and maybe some flush draws all sorts of hands he could be doing this with so now I think my options are call or maybe I could mix in another raise here. Now get behind me. I feel like he could be doing this with a variety of hands. Some hands that can't really withstand too much pressure here. Now I call it out of the straddle. I can have all the two pairs. I can have pocket threes, pocket fives. He really shouldn't have any two pairs on this board. So instead of just calling here out of position, I decide to put in a three bet on this flop. I make it $700. My plan here is if he calls this bet, I'm going to be shoving basically any turn card for almost a pot size bet. Well, the action's back over here on the button who raised preflop, raised here on the flop, and now he calls this $700 bet. This pot is getting huge, almost $1,600 plus in the middle, and the turn card's the seven of diamonds. Now I pick up a straight draw to go along with my flush draw as well. I'm going to stick with the plan. I'm going to try to put max pressure on his Jack X holdings and his over pairs. And I jam all in for just about a $1,600 bet. My opponent doesn't snap call right away, which is great. That means he doesn't have a set, probably doesn't have aces either. He then starts talking to me a little bit, goes into the tank, and eventually makes the call. Ugh. Well, this is not what we wanted. And when the river cards the ace of diamonds, I tell him, I missed, you're good. And I'm completely shocked when he shows me 7-4 of hearts for a pair of 7s, which is going to win almost a $5,000 pot here. He called my $700 3-bet on the flop with a gut shot and then called my all-in here with just a pair of 7s. And that's going to win to take down a massive pot here, my first hand of the night. Not exactly how we want to be starting this session, but about a half an hour later, I rebuy for $2,500 and look down at Jack's on the button. I raise to $75 and the big blind three bets me to $250. I think I could go back and forth between flat calling this three bet and putting in a four bet. Given the fact that it's a button raise and a big blind three bet, I feel like he can have a wider range of hands here. Let's say it was an early position raise and an early position three bet. I would probably just call with Jack's. But button versus big blind, I think we can mix in some four bets, which is what I do. I decide to re-raise again to $625. Now, right when my chips hit the felt for this $625 four bet, my opponent in the big blind snap jams all in for $2,300 without thinking for it for more than two seconds. Now, immediately when he does this, I just put him on ace-king. I think he would think about his decision a little bit more if he had aces or kings. I think if he had queens, he would probably just call, 
my four bet and look to see what happens on the flop. I'm not sure exactly what it was, but I just put him on ace king. It's only about $1,600 left for me to call. I'm pretty sure we're flipping, so I put in the chips. Another $5,000 putt incoming here, and he does show me ace king offsuit. And the flop looks good, queen eight three, but the turn's an ace and the river's an ace, and we lose another massive pot, and now we are down almost $5,000 on the day. I have to rebuy for the third time today for another $2,500. Hopefully we can try to get something going and get some of our money back. While all this is going on, there's an action player to my right who's playing basically every single hand. This guy is a maniac. He's raising blind, he's betting huge amounts into every single pot, and he's also bluffing like crazy. Well, this hand comes up about an hour after that pocket jacks hand. I now have around a $3,500 stack, so I've gotten back around $1,000 that I'm down. There's a hijack raise to 60, a three bet by the cutoff, who's the action player to $200, and I peel back jacks again now on the button. I feel like this is a spot where we wanna be four betting quite often. Try to go heads up here in position with this crazy maniac action player. I don't wanna call 225, and allow other players left to act to come into the pot or allow maybe someone to squeeze the dead money out. So I decide to four bet to $525. For the second time today, we are four betting jacks. Well, the hijack player folds, but the cutoff player, the action player makes the call. Over $1,100 in the middle. And the flop comes out king six three rainbow. Not the worst flop, but not the best flop either. He's gonna have some ace king, king queen, king jack in his range. He checks and I down bet very small on this super dry board. I make it 225 bucks. And right when my chips hit the felt, the cutoff action player check raises to $1,500. A huge check raise on this board. Now immediately I think to myself, well, he must have a king. I'm just gonna fold my jacks. But then I start to think to myself, is he ever? gonna be playing a king x hand like this would he ever raise this big with a hand like king 10 king queen king jack i mean i can have aces i can have ace king i can have pocket kings would he really be raising on this flop with a single pair hand i don't think he's gonna have a two pair hand on this particular flop so after thinking about it for about two minutes i feel like he's trying to make a move here he's done this multiple times throughout this session where he's raised huge on the flop with a turn his opponent folded and he showed a big bluff. And I feel like this is one of those times he's trying to bully me. He's trying to make a statement. He's trying to bluff me. So I decide to just go with my hand. If he's got me, he's got me. I jam all in for a $3,000 total, $1,500 more for him to call. Right when I jam all in, he says to me, oops, you caught me. And of course, those are great words to hear. I was hoping he didn't have a king or two pair, and after him saying that, it's pretty evident that he does not have a king, two pair, or probably anything on this board. Now, of course, after him saying this, I kind of want to call him down almost $5,000 on the day. If I could win this pot, I can almost get back to even, and after looking at the pot, looking at my bet, he decides to put in the chips. I show pocket jacks, and he shows ace jack of clubs. All he has here is just ace high and backdoor draws. Well, the dealer puts out the turn, which is the four of diamonds. Looks good for us. And the river card, ace of diamonds. Oh my God. An ace on the river to lose a $7,000 pot here. I was down $5,000 and now I'm down over $7,500 within the first two hours of our session, losing a massive pot, a terrible river for us. My opponent only had three outs in the deck and he hit it and ends up stacking us here. Just a nasty, nasty beat. Well, I don't wanna give up. The action player is still here, but the problem is I don't have any more money. So I head to the cage and get into my front money account and take out a bunch of thousands of dollars so I can rebuy again and immediately get into a spot with the same action player. I raise ace jack suited from early position. There's a call and the action player to my right three bets me to 300. I make the call and we go heads up to ace 10 seven two spades. I flop top pair and the nut flush draw. He now leads out for a massive $500 bet. 
on this flop. Well, can't do anything but call here, which is what I do. Turn card four of clubs. He looks over at me, looks at my stack, and jams all in. Well, I just don't think I can ever fold top pair in the nut flush draw, so I make the call. River card pairs the 10. I show ace jack. He looks at me, looks back at his cards, and shows ace queen. Wow. I mean, I don't know what to say. We just got completely crushed, and after this hand, I'm down almost $12,000. I don't think I can take any more brutal beats on the night, so I end up calling it after losing in a ridiculous amount of money. I just lost $11,700 in one night. The biggest loss I've ever had in my entire life. Almost $12,000 lost in a 5 10 25 game. Just disgusting. Um, Nothing went my way the entire night. I just ran pretty bad. Um, I don't feel terrible, though. I don't feel awful. Like, obviously, it hurts to lose this much money. I've never lost this much money before in my entire life. My biggest loss before this was maybe like six or $7,000. So to lose almost $12,000 in four hours is pretty horrific, pretty nasty. But I feel okay with the way I played. I played super aggressive. And if I'm going to play really aggressive, I'm, I'm going to check raise and I'm going to bluff big and I'm going to play big pots, I'm going to take huge high variance swings. So sometimes the hands go my way and I win and then sometimes they don't. So if I play very low variance, very passive poker, my swings will be small. But if I play very aggressive, uh, big pot poker, then yeah, sometimes I'm going to lose a lot of pots back to back to back and I'm going to lose a lot of money. But tonight was just horrific that pocket jacks hand in a four bet pot my opponent called off with ace jack and then hit an ace on the river that was one of the worst beats i've taken in a long time um he only had three outs going to the river and he hit it uh so i'm like 90 percent to win that 7k pot so that was really bad and then i just get stacked immediately after that ace jack versus ace queen um the worst losing session of my entire life but i don't feel terrible luckily enough i have the bankroll to withstand this so i can take these big losses and still be able to come back and play so that's good i'm probably going to take a day off tomorrow just kind of let myself cool down but i guess the only thing we can do is just uh, get back at it and try to win some of that money back i can't stay away for long just about a day later i head back in here to the poker room to play some 510 i'm going to try to not let the previous day get into my head. I'm going to try to just play my best poker and not really think about losing almost $12,000 and running bad. Every session's a new session. Just because I had a really bad day the day before doesn't mean I'm going to continue to run bad and lose today. First hand we get into here, there's a limp for $25 from a middle position player and I peel back ace queen and the big blind raise to 100 and the limper makes to call. Heads up, out of position to nine deuce deuce. Now, not the best board for my hand, but I feel like we should be ahead here a lot of the time with ace high. I continue for a $75 bet and now the middle position player raises me to $250. This kind of feels like a raise that he would do to kind of see where he's at. Maybe with a 9x hand, possibly a hand like 6s, 7s, 8s. I could call here, try to float, maybe hit an ace or a queen on the turn. I could make somewhat of a tight fold, or I could try to apply max pressure to his pocket pairs. He's got about $1,200 left. I can have the big pocket pairs here. He really can't have queens, kings, or aces by limp calling preflop. So I decide to jam all in. Try to get him to fold out some of his pairs that we're losing to. Also, we probably are never drawing dead here. We should have some clean outs on the turn of the river if he decides to call, which he does. We're playing a pretty big pot right off the bat. $2,500 in the middle. Turn cards a four. Doesn't help us, but the river's an ace. Giving me top pair queen kicker. I show my hand and it's good. And we end up winning a decent one right off the bat. Next up, I get dealt in queens and the cutoff raised to 75. Small blind calls and straddle calls. Three ways to 9, 6, 3, 2 spades. I continue for a $150 C-bet and only the small blind makes the call. So we're heads up to the 8 of hearts on the turn. He checks again and I think I can go big here on this turn card. I feel like he's going to have a lot of pair plus straight draws. Possibly pair plus flush draws. Maybe even pocket 10s or ace 9, king 9. So I bet $475 and the small blind makes a pretty quick call. River card, king of spades. Not my favorite. Over card to my pair. 
front door flush gets there. When he checks, I check back, and we end up winning here against pocket sevens. Just a reminder of my meetup game at Seminole Casino Coconut Creek, January 31st, the day this video comes out, Tuesday, 6 p.m. Hope to see you guys there. Next hand, I get moved over to the main game, and the small blind races to 100. I call with ace, jack of diamonds in the straddle and go heads up to ace, jack, eight, two hearts. Top two pair for us. Small blind continues for 100, and I flat call 100. Turn card, four of clubs. My opponent continues for a $150 bet. Well, a raise is definitely incoming now, so I make it $500. My opponent has $2,000 remaining, so I'm hoping if he calls this $500 bet, I can shove most river cards if he ends up making the call, which he does. So now we're playing over a $1,000 pot, ace, jack, top two pair, river card, seven of diamonds, front door flush misses, 910 gets there for a straight, but when he checks, he's got $1,500 left. I decide to go for it and jam all in for value. We get a very quick call and we are good to win another pot, three for three now. Things are going much better today. I'm already up about five or six thousand plus dollars right off the bat. Feels very nice to have a session that's complete polar opposite from the disaster we had two days ago. Everything seems to be going my way and this next hand is one of the craziest hands I've ever played in my entire life. It all starts out here when it folds to the small blind who raises to 75. Big blind calls 75 and I peel back jack 10 of clubs in the straddle. I three bet it up here to 275 bucks and the small blind very quickly folds, but the big blind makes the call. The big blind started the hand with a little over $4,000. He just doubled up about an hour ago and he kind of seemed like he was trying to lock up the win. He didn't seem like he was playing too many hands. Looks like he was trying to pick his spots well and playing fairly tight. So we end up going heads up here in a three bet pot and the flop comes out nine, nine deuce with one club. So we basically flop nothing on this board, but I don't think my opponent's going to flop much on this board either. I don't think he's calling pre-flop with, with many 9x hands when I make it $275. I think he's going to have a lot of ace high hands, broadway hands, and middling pocket pairs. So when he checks, I bet out $200. And now to my surprise, my opponent check raises me to $450. Bucks. Well, this sizing is just really small check raising out of position to basically a min raise i definitely think given the fact that we're so deep stacked here i can easily call here and float trying to pick up some equity on the turn if he checks to me on the turn i could try to bluff i then start thinking of the fact that i feel like this guy is trying to lock up the win i don't feel like he's going to want to play for his entire stack i feel like he's got a middling pair that he's trying to see where he's at or sometimes he could just have a bluff here like ace queen or ace jack and he's just trying to get me off an ace high or king high hand so instead of floating here in position i decide to take a very weird line and three bet the flop to a thousand dollars now i could have aces and kings in this spot and i feel like he's just never going to have aces and kings i also feel like he's never going to play a 9x hand like this i mean the board is so dry if he did flop trips which i think is very unlikely would he really check raise on this board or would he try to let me continue to bluff on the turn and then maybe check raise then? So I'm trying to take the advantage of this spot here and really try to put a lot of pressure on his middling pocket pairs. If he was bluffing with his check raise, he'll just make a very quick fold. The action's over my opponent and he is thinking now for a while. And I start to think that this is definitely going to get through. I think he's going to hero fold pocket sevens or eights. But he does decide to call $1,000. Okay, this pot is getting big. Over $2,500 in the middle. And the turn card is the 10 of spades. Very interesting here. We now pick up top pair with a jack kicker. If he checks to me, I'm definitely going to be checking this one back. Now we're beating all those pocket pairs that we were losing to on the flop. But that doesn't happen when my opponent in the big blind leads out now. For a $1,250 bet, my head is just spinning right now. What is going on? He check raised me on the flop. He then called my $1,000 three bet and then now is leading into me for $1,250. I'm still convinced I don't think he would ever play a trips nine hand like this. I mean, if he did have jack nine or eight nine or seven nine, 
or even 10-9, wouldn't he want to check to me on the turn, let me bet, and then check jam all in? So I'm pretty convinced he doesn't have a 9. I feel like it's possible he could have an overpair like jacks or queens, but wouldn't he 3-bet that preflop? Well, I made this crazy play on the flop of 3-betting to $1,000. I can't fold now that I made a pair, so I make the call. A huge pot brewing here. A massive, massive pot going here to the river, which is another 10. We go runner, runner, perfect, 10-10 to make a full house on the river. Before I even realize what I have and how lucky I got, my opponent in the big blind jams all in. He jams all in for his last $1,700. Of course, I make a very quick call. When I show my hand, my opponent looks shocked when he sees that I went runner, runner, full house. He then picks up his cards to his face and I glance over to my right and I see that he's holding the queen of clubs and I can't see the other card. Eventually he folds and I start to think, what kind of hand could he have? Could he have had queen nine? Well, the nine of clubs is on the board so he can't have queen nine suited. I don't think he's calling a three bet with queen nine offsuit. So he must have had pocket queens. I guess that's a hand he would check raise in the flop. Maybe he just felt too pot committed and went all in there on the river. A crazy runner runner full house for us to win a massive 8,000 plus dollar pot. After a couple hours of playing, I end up cashing out for over a $13,000 stack here at 510. A complete polar opposite session from the one I had before, profiting almost $9,000 in just about four hours. Wow, what a comeback. I end up losing $11,000 two days ago and then come back in today and win almost $9,000. I mean, I couldn't really ask for a better session. I ran super well. I played aggressive and, and basically won every single big pot. I also won like probably 30 really small to medium sized pots that just added up. Like I would raise, they would call, I would bet the flop, they would fold. I would call a raise, you know, I'd bet the turn, they would fold. And that just happened over and over and over again, where I was just taking down like $200, $300, $400. And obviously those uh, pots add up. And then the craziest hand of the night, maybe the craziest hand I've ever played, like one of the biggest pots I've ever played is when I three bet pre-flop with Jack 10 of clubs, three bet the flop to a thousand, turn a pair, call a bet, and then river a full house. Just runner, runner, perfect, perfect to end up winning like a $7,000 pot there and stacking that guy. So just an insane night. The complete polar opposite from that last session when I lost almost $12,000 to then win almost $9,000. We're not completely out of the hole yet, but hey, I will take it. A great win. Uh, feels good for sure. Um, if you guys are watching this, Tuesday, January 31st, the day this video comes out, I'm having a meetup game, Seminole Casino, Coconut Creek, at 6 p.m. to midnight. It's a 1-3-5 game. Hope to see you guys there. But uh, the crazy swings of poker. I'm glad I was able to take you guys along with me. Um, it's a wild game, and uh, yeah, I'm going to go home. I'm going to eat. I'm going to sleep. I'm going to hang out with my dog. Until next time, I'll see you.